Rick Mayo is a health club owner and innovator within the fitness industry. He has built a successful business and empowers others to do so through his licensing model. The FMS is a significant part of his fitness program, as well as his overall business strategy. So Rick, you've got the FMS as part of your business and fitness model. I mean, what originally attracted you to the FMS? Yeah, so when we, when we really look to build systems, for me it was like, what's out there that I can feel good about? It has integrity around it scientifically, but it's also simple enough where all my guys can run it with integrity and get consistent results. Through the FMS, we get to see what our clients' issues are in terms of mobility and stability standpoint, and that directly correlates right into our programming because our programs are built for every different level client. It's all about finding that inner athlete, whatever it may be, whether it's just you know keeping it um, super simple or we taking it up a few notches. To see what you guys have done has just been amazing. I always say that it's it's probably underestimated most for its ability to help us sell personal training. So to give you an example, in our gym, when we get to the end of that one hour sales process and we've done the functional movement screen, we can now make a prescriptive sale. Well, we opened in 92. Like for real, we've been here since 92. So we had that middle space over there. All, right. um, all one on one training. What were the three pieces of equipment? Think well, well, we had doubles. So we had duplicates of leg extension, all right. leg curl, <laughs> nice Smith machine. <laughs> I used to be a big giant bodybuilder and um, I was paying my way through college as a personal trainer. So in 92, I thought, well, I'd like to maybe take the customer experience around this personal training that I'm doing and put it into these four walls. This was the original? Just this little sliver? Yeah, like, like sliver. here and, and that. 1,500 feet? 1992. 92, baby. Muscle pants and fanny packs nice. and the whole deal. It's great. I think really, from our standpoint, we were just adamant about the fact that we believed in the science behind it and we were going to use it. So it took us probably five years of trial and error. So if anything, I could just hopefully offer folks a shortcut. The competition is so busy telling you how they're different that if you will behave a little bit cleaner, a little bit simpler, on a little bit more science, the client's getting ready to tell you how different you are. The penetration of people that partake in fitness is maybe up a percent or two, maybe, and this is for a long period of time. The competition is up 300% in that same market. How are you gonna differentiate yourself? Well, how about you do something different on the front end that says, hey, you are important to us as an individual, right? And that's the thing I love about the screen. This is a behavior reserved for the way we treat pro athletes and Olympians. Anybody with guts enough to get out of that parking lot, get in here and move, they deserve that amount of time. Let's just play this role real quick. You walk into my bike shop and I'm back here and I got on the bike apron and all the tools are around. I'm the only guy in there. And the first time you walk in my bike shop, even though you're getting ready to ask a question about a bike, it's not about the bike. It's about you deciding you're going to get a bigger life and you want to use one of these machines to do that. All you had was questions about the bike, but it wasn't about that. I had to figure out who you were because I wanted the loyalty and commitment to this little thing, not just the quick sale. If you're working out in this large group training setting, how do I know when you're ready to graduate from say level one to level two? Have you really improved your movement patterns? You know? Are you really ready with integrity to move to level two, right? And so you have to be using something to measure movement. It has to be part of the ongoing process. How did you do it? You put it into your system, it's working obviously. We had a very successful model, so we were doing a lot of consulting for other trainers, and a large gym guy, a gold gym guy actually, that's in our market approached us and said, hey, can you take what you do for training and drop it into our gold gym? And so fast forward to now, and you know we're in hundreds of clubs all over the world from Tasmania to Poland and everything in between. 